This is the third video in our workshop series, From Cloud to Loop to Community Develop Tools. My name is Matt. I'm going to discuss, in broad strokes, single-cell RNA-seq data analysis. Before we get into that, I would like to briefly recap the previous workshop videos. In our previous videos, we introduced the Neutrophil dataset and walked you through how to set up an analysis on 10x's cloud analysis platform. We also touched upon how your experimental design can influence the settings you choose. In this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction to 10x's single-cell RNA-seq technology. Then I'm going to give an overview of Cell Ranger, which, if you're following along with the previous videos in the workshop series, is running under the hood of the cloud analysis platform. Finally, I will conclude with where we are in our Neutrophil dataset analysis. Let's get started with our introduction to single-cell RNA-seq data analysis by looking at 10x's technology. We use microfluidics to mix a single cell with a barcode containing gel bead in a high throughput fashion. Through a series of reactions, we create a barcoded cDNA library suitable for next generation sequencing. After the library is sequenced, the reads are aligned to a reference genome and gene expression is quantified. If you take a closer look at the gel beads, you see that they consist of single stranded oligos that have a couple of key features. First, they contain a 10x barcode for cell calling. These barcodes allow us to group reads that come from the same cell together. Second, a unique molecular identifier, or UMI, to help with PCR duplication. And finally, a poly T tail to capture messenger RNA. As I mentioned earlier, during a single cell RNA seq experiment, we create a cDNA library. It has a read structure shown here. There are sequences that enable next generation sequencing on an Illumina sequencer, as well as the barcode and UMI sequences that we just discussed. Importantly, sandwiched in the read structure is the insert sequence, which is used for genome alignment and ultimately gene expression quantification. This approach of labeling reads on a single cell basis enables us to ask some amazing biological questions. We can ask questions such as what genes are expressed in different cell populations? What is the cell type composition of the sample and does it change with development or insult? Are there novel cell types present? As you explore the different cell types identified in your data, you can ask what pathways are activated? How are cells transitioning between states either in a developmental context or in response to trauma? You can even ask how do cells communicate with each other? As you go about asking these questions, it is convenient to picture your analysis as a series of steps or a journey. Here I have illustrated one such data analysis workflow. Your workflow may be different and it will depend on your experimental design and the goals of your project. In general, we start with some FASTQ files that are processed in order to quantify gene expression. You then perform some QC and filter your data. If you have multiple data sets, you'll integrate them. Once you have your gene expression data in hand, you will cluster it and visualize the results. At this point, you'll typically annotate the different clusters and look at differential gene expression. To be clear, this is not a linear process. You might need to go back and iterate through the steps as you explore your data. Once you have annotated your data, you can begin to really dig into it, especially as you branch out into community developed tools. The steps outlined here encompass Cell Ranger, Loop Browser, and many community developed tools. Before we dive into the analysis workflow more, I want to again call attention to the software tools used in single cell RNA seq data analysis. First, there is Cell Ranger, which is developed by 10x Genomics. It is a collection of pipelines for processing 10x single cell data. Second, we have the Loop Browser, which is also developed by 10x Genomics. It is a desktop tool for interactive analysis and visualization of your data. Third, there is community developed tools. Later in this workshop series, we'll touch upon trajectory analysis. It is one example of an analysis enabled by community developed tools. These tools are primarily programming libraries developed by the broader research community. Let's talk about Cell Ranger in more detail. Please recall, if you're following along with the workshop, it is the program running under the hood of 10x's cloud analysis platform. Cell Ranger, as I have mentioned, consists of various pipelines or programs, such as MakeFastQ, which is used to demultiplex your sequencing data and generate samples of specific FASTQ files, Count, which takes in the FASTQ files and quantifies gene expression, 
and agar, which aggregates or merges count data, and reanalyze, which enables you to reprocess your data adjusting some parameters. In our analysis and today, we are focusing on the count program within the cell ranger. To run the different pipelines of cell ranger and cell ranger count specifically, you have a couple of options. You can use the 10x cloud analysis platform requires you to understand the experimental design so you can set your parameters accordingly. You can also use a Linux server or high performance cluster. Using a Linux server will require understanding your experimental design as well as a certain level of comfort working in a Linux environment and using the command line. It also helps to be familiar with your organization's data management system and it helps to know who to contact if you run into issues. As mentioned, today I'm going to focus specifically on Cell Ranger's count pipeline, which is what we are using to process the Nutrafil dataset. In general, the reads contained within a set of FASTQ files are aligned to a reference genome. Then the number of reads aligning to a feature of interest, for example a gene, is quantified, thereby creating a raw matrix of read, feature, or gene counts. These counted reads are used to identify cell-associated barcodes and are used to remove background barcodes. This creates a filtered count matrix. The filtered matrix is used in secondary analyses such as clustering, data visualization, and differential gene analysis. This is all performed by the Cell Ranger Count Pipeline. Circling back, let's remind ourselves of where we are in the neutrophil dataset analysis. We have set up our analysis on the 10x cloud analysis platform. Since we are interested in neutrophils, we decided to use the four cells parameter and we decided to include introns. At this point, we are ready to start looking at the data. You might be wondering, what exactly should I look at first? Well, it is good to first check to see how well your experiment and analysis work by assessing data quality. A good place to start in your data quality assessment is by reviewing the web summary, which is the subject of the next video in this series. We are going to cover important metrics associated with sequencing and mapping, for example. We are also going to talk about barcode rank plots and what you can find in the analysis tab. 